This is Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly update on Viking athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Enjoy the action and excitement of NCAA Division II athletics at Augustana. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Augustana Sports Scene. I'm Bill Gross, Athletic Director at Augustana College. On this week's show, we'll feature some exciting action as we spin our Augustana Sports Update. We'll also talk Augustana men's basketball with Coach Tom Billiter and women's basketball with Coach Dave Krauth. And we'll also visit with Vikings head football coach Mike Aldrich about the Augustana game at Minnesota Duluth in the playoffs and a reflection on the 2010 season. And we'll take a look at what's ahead on the Augustana sports calendar for this week. It's going to be a fun one, so let's get the action rolling. Here comes Augustana Sports Update for this week. Augustana Sports Update is brought to you by Shonamans. Last Saturday afternoon, Coach Mike Aldrich's Augustana football team dropped a hard-fought 24-13 NCAA Division II playoff game at Minnesota Duluth. The Bulldogs, ranked number one in the country, used a rugged running attack and a physical defense to gain their 13th straight victory of the season. The Vikings, ranked ninth in the nation, finished their record-setting season at 11-2. Augustana has now compiled a 27-10 overall record over the last three seasons. Early in the game, the Vikings got out to a 6-0 lead on a 34-yard touchdown pass from Josh Hansen to Tyler Schulte. The score was set up by an interception by defensive back Zach Callis, but the rest of the first half was dominated by UMD as they used their powerful rushing attack to score two touchdowns and added the third on a fumble recovery TD to take a 21-6 halftime lead. Augustana outplayed the Bulldogs in the second half as they did a much better job of stopping the run. Late in the third quarter, the Vikings got back in the game on a one-yard touchdown plunge by Joe Clark. Joe's run capped a 15-play drive by Augustana, which included a big fake punt play and scamper by punter Drew Behrens. In the fourth quarter, the Vikings' defense continued to make stops, but the offense was not able to get in the end zone. Offensively, Josh Hansen completed 14 of 28 passes. Tyler Schulte led Augustana receivers with four catches for 63 yards. Joe Clark led the Vikings rushing attack with 50 yards on nine carries. Chris Janish led Augustana on defense with 15 tackles. It was the final game for 13 Augustana seniors. In cross country, coach Tracy Hellman's men's and women's teams competed in the NCAA Division II championships in Louisville, Kentucky. The Augustana men, led by Matt Braithwaite and Tom Carbo, finished sixth, while the Viking ladies, paced by Kristen Bronbo and Runa Falk, finished seventh. It was another outstanding season for the Vikings, with both teams placing with the elite teams across the country. In wrestling, coach Jason Reitmeyer's team pounded the University of Sioux Falls 47 to nothing at the Elman Center. The Vikings, ranked number three in NCAA Division II, rattled off 10 straight wins on their way to the victory. Winning with pins for Augustana were Chisholm Fink at 149 pounds, Austin Carmichael at 157, Sean Derry at 174, and Lance Peters at heavyweight. In women's basketball, Coach Dave Krause team opened NSIC play by splitting a pair of road games. The Vikings fell to Southwest Minnesota State 63-56 before coming back to defeat Minnesota State Mankato 67-55. In the Southwest game, Augustana had four players scoring double figures with Christy Board scoring a team-high 13 points with eight rebounds. Alex Feeney had 12 points with Molly Hayes and Megan Doyle adding 11 each. In the win at Mankato, Megan Doyle led the Vikings with 22 points. Christy Board added 14, Alex Feeney 11, and Molly Hayes 10. In men's basketball, Coach Tom Billiter's team dropped a pair of NSIC road games at Southwest Minnesota State and at Minnesota State Mankato. Cody Schilling led the Vikings at Southwest with 30 points, while Cameron McCaffrey paced the team in Mankato with 18 points and five assists. That's our sports update for this week. When we come back, we'll talk Augustana men's basketball with Coach Tom Billiter. Stay with us. Augustana Sports Scene is brought to you by Sanford Health, improving the human condition, by Shonemans, your trusted building center since 1888, and by Midcontinent Communications, part of your community. 
At Shonemans, our staff's expertise goes far beyond hardware. In fact, we know just how important your home is to you and are committed to making every project a success. So, whether you're just adding some color to your life or adding on for your growing family, Shonemans can help. Sure, we know you can pick up nails just about anywhere, but when it's expert advice you need, you'll find it only at Shonemans. You can always do it right with Shonemans. We call it the pioneer spirit. Always pushing a little farther. Always seeking something better. Today's pioneers still have it. We're creating something new. Something that will transform lives worldwide. That will redefine healthcare. We're doing it for you. With you. The pioneer spirit still lives. Right here. In the new Sanford Health. The Augustana Men's Basketball Report is brought to you by Sanford Health. Joining me now is Augustana Men's Basketball Coach Tom Billiter. Tom, last weekend the Vikings got the NFIC started with uh, a pair of road games. It started out on Friday night over at Southwest Minnesota State. Uh, great college basketball game. Unfortunately, Vikings came up a little short. Well, we lost by two. You know, it was a great game. We're up five with four minutes, four minutes, seven seconds to go. Um, thought, you know, momentum was on our side and then just didn't execute some things uh, down the stretch. But it's like Coach Bigler and I were talking after the game and uh, both of us, you know, it was just a, a great game. I don't know, 11, 12, 13 lead changes, several ties. It was a, a, just a great college basketball game and a nice crowd. I mean, you know, we had uh, Augie Hollicks there and parents and um, not good travel weather. You know, yeah. it was a bad uh, trip once we got, you know, it was actually pretty good up till about Pipestone, Low Pass there. But, um, you know, it, it just you build on those kinds of games and what have you. Cody Schilling with 30 points, unfortunately, lose. But, you know, we're not a good team to have someone score 30 because on Eric Jorgensen, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Eric Krogman had 30 points, 10 rebounds against Omaha a couple years ago and we lost to them up there too. <laughs> so every time somebody gets 30 points, it seems like it's not a good thing. So, I, I mean, Cody was just great, 12 for 19 from the field. So you hate to waste a night like that from a player like that. But, uh, you know, there were a lot of good things. It was a great college basketball mm -hmm. game. Well, unfortunately, we came up a little short. Uh, uh, then, with the weather, the challenge was uh, getting over to Mankato. Yeah. Tough trip. It was a tough trip. You know, three hours, three and a half TV game. We didn't get out of there a lot. We pulled into Mankato about 2.30 in the morning, um, up early for an uh, early morning, you know, morning shoot around because the games were at 4 and 6, a little bit out of our, out of our uh, maybe what our routine normally is. But that's okay. I mean, I, I think those are things a young team has to overcome and learn. And, you know, I, I just look at everything as, as still this year is going to be a, a good year. But I also look at it. Is money in the bank. I know you're going to get to this, but I, you know we had two key free throws by Leif Nomlin the night before. We're up one with a couple minutes to go. He misses both of them. They're right on there, just perfect. Against Mankato, we're, so we'll get a little comeback. We're down to about 12 or 14, maybe four minutes to go, um, and we get a kid hurt. Brennan Olson tears his, or hurts his knee. Well, they get to pick anybody on the floor to shoot him. They pick Leif Nomlin, and he just sinks and swishes both of them. See, I, I, that's growth. You know, to me, I think the next time Leif's in that situation. As a sophomore, he's going to make those free throws. So, you know, I just see just huge potential for growth. And I still like our team. I mean, I, but, but that was just kind of a neat thing to see that night. Well, it's a long conference season, you know, 22 games. And uh, the good news is this weekend the Vikings get to come back home, get that crowd behind us. On Friday night, uh, we take on a pretty doggone good University of Mary team. Well, very good. You know, uh, a team that going into the year I had marked as maybe one of the top three, four teams in the league, no question. Everybody back from a very good team last year. Anthony Moody is as good a point guard as there is possibly in the country at our level. So, and a team that's had our number, which everyone knows, and it's kind of funny to talk about or whatever. But you know, those things happen sometimes, and it's time for us to you know prepare well, get ready to go, and and uh, you know it's a unique matchup, and and see how we play. A little adversity on our back from the two games this weekend, of of which happens, and you know I'm kind of anxious for a good week of practice, see where we're at. Okay, and then uh, that one's at eight o'clock on Friday night. Then Saturday at six, it's a big game everybody waits for every year as we take on the Northern State Wolves. Yeah, and you know, Paul's doing a great job. They've had close games all year, beat some very good teams, went in preseason, played Oklahoma to a, like a, ended up being a, like a 10 or 12 point game, but down six with just a couple minutes to go. I mean, they're, they're you know, Paul's a good coach. He's very familiar, obviously, having played and coached there. And good team, good young players mixed with old, nice transfer from uh, Cleveland State, who's really done a great job for him. So, um, got a good basketball team, and, and both games will just be great. It, it'll be great college basketball, and I hope people show up because they're going to see a really fun evening. Well, fans, get to the Almond Center. The men play Mary at 8 o'clock Friday night. 
Northern Saturday at 6. It's going to be great basketball. Good luck, Tom. Thanks, Bill. The August Nana Women's Basketball Report with Coach Dave Krauth is next. Discover German engineering and premium style in the Jetta at Graham Automotive. Starting at $15,995, the all-new 2011 Jetta has arrived. Completely redesigned, making it the largest car in its class. The all-new Jetta for 2011 includes Volkswagen's scheduled carefree maintenance. Graham Automotive and Volkswagen invite you to test drive the new 2011 Jetta today. We call it the pioneer spirit, always pushing a little farther, always seeking something better. Today's pioneers still have it. We're creating something new, something that will transform lives worldwide, that will redefine healthcare. We're doing it for you, with you. The pioneer spirit still lives right here. The new Sanford Health. The Augustana Women's Basketball Report is brought to you by Mid-Continent Communications. With me now is Augustana Women's Basketball Coach Dave Kraut. Dave, last weekend the Vikings got uh, rolling in NSIC play as we hit the road for games at uh, Southwest Minnesota State and Minnesota State Mankato. Uh, in Marshall to begin with on Friday night, uh, the Vikings took on the Mustangs, came out on the short end 63-56. to 56. Yeah, it was uh, it was a tough ball game. Uh, I can't say I was uh, surprised by anything that happened that night. Uh, uh, Southwest has a veteran club, uh, had a coaching change over, and have gone through a little bit of that transition. But uh, you can kind of see that they're starting to put the pieces together now. Where they're buying into her system probably, and uh, they really defended us well. And we we just had a hard time putting the ball in the basket and made some runs. Uh, had a couple of short leads in the second half but just couldn't sustain our energy wasn't very good yeah yeah well uh you know life on the road or at home i mean every game's a challenge and so after that, <coughs> excuse me after that one the good news was that uh the vikings uh made the trip over to mankato and came back with a uh, 65 uh, 67 55 win over uh over the lady mavericks yeah, and you know, a little bit different style of team than the second night. It'll be similar to uh, this weekend where uh, Mankato a little more like us, um, although their big kid inside, their 6'3 kid did hurt us. Um, but uh, we were just, uh, you know, we reached down, really found some better energy that second night, and that seemed to be the difference. Uh, we did shoot better, but we got to the basket better. and. Uh, and so, you know, I think, you know, when you really uh, approach it and, and know you're going to put your best effort out there, oftentimes the results will be better for you. Yeah, well, uh, good comeback victory. Vikings now 1-1 one and one in the uh, NSIC. And it's uh, back home this weekend, and this will be fun. Uh, two uh, doubleheaders here at the Elman Center. Uh, this weekend, the Vikings start out on Friday night against the University of Mary with a 6 o'clock ball game. What do you expect from Mary? Well, it, it might be uh, similar to the previous weekend in that Mary, uh, like Mankato, isn't quite as big and will play a little more up-tempo. Um, they're very similar to us, and we've had some barn burners with them over the last uh, couple years, so I expect that to be a, probably a pretty entertaining basketball game. Uh, they've had some, they went out to Weber State in their exhibition and won by 20 at Weber State, which gives you an idea uh you know how they beat concordia on on saturday night at home and uh, concordia is still loaded with talent on the perimeter so that that'll be a tough one yeah and i believe you said before we went on the air 91 to 88 yep. was that score yep. so i mean and they like to shoot the three and yep. they're a fun team uh, yeah uh, for fans anyway yes yeah. <laughs> and uh, coach now we shot 20 percent on threes this past weekend one for 20 with our starting three guards uh, so we're going to have to shoot a little bit better at home yeah okay well then after that one on at four o'clock on saturday it's a rival game here with Northern State, a team that's off to a good start. It's a four o'clock ball game. Talk about the Wolves. Well, th that would be, you know, kind of at least personnel-wise, the, the opposite of a, a Mankato, a Mary. They'll big, uh, strong, physical, impose their will kind of on you. Uh, and when I say big, I mean it's 6'6", six, 6'3", six, 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 that type of size. Uh, with a lot of veterans again, and, and you can almost say that with most of our teams around the league. It just doesn't seem like anybody graduates uh, a ton of kids, but uh, they're off to a very good start and are just a solid ball club. And I think he really sees them as a team that'll be or Kurt Fredrickson as being in the hunt in the end. Yeah, well, fans, uh, get over to that one. It's always fun when we play Northern. 
And then, uh, Dave, I guess to finish things up here, just, you know, you're one and one now in the NSIC. Uh, it kind of gives you uh, an opportunity to kind of uh, maybe gauge where you're at and what you need to work on. What's your practice focus this week? Well, uh, the, the one thing that just keeps slapping us in the face is the fact that we play a smaller lineup and we've really gotten hurt uh, both inside and on the boards uh, against conference teams and in some non-conference games. So that's something we're going to have to figure out a way to deal with better, get a little bit more of an inside game ourselves offensively. Um, and there's probably different ways to approach that, but it is something that's, you know, it's got our attention enough. We've lost two of our better athletes to uh, ACLs, so it gives us a little flexi uh, less flexibility there, too. But it is something that, you know, that's the area. I think we'll shoot better at home, but that, that uh, inside game is we're going to have to figure out how to shore that up. Well, it'll be a big week of uh, home basketball games for the Vikings, so get over to the Elman Center and uh, watch the team play. Good luck, Dave. Thanks, Bill. Up next, Augie Sports Focus. Stay with us. We call it the pioneer spirit. Always pushing a little farther. Always seeking something better. Today's pioneers still have it. We're creating something new. Something that will transform lives worldwide. That will redefine healthcare. We're doing it for you. With you. The pioneer spirit still lives. Right here. The new Sanford Health. Augustana Sports Focus is brought to you by Shoneman's. Joining me now is Augustana head football coach Mike Aldrich. Well, Mike, last Saturday afternoon up in uh, Chile Duluth, the Vikings took on the number one ranked UMD Bulldogs. It was a very intensely fought football game. Uh, the Vikings battled hard, but uh, unfortunately we came out on the short end 24 to 13. Your thoughts? Well, you know, it, uh, the game went kind of like we thought it would. Um, we knew that, uh, that we could beat those guys, but we had to play perfect to do it. And we made um, way too many mistakes to get that done. And, you know, against a lesser team, um, you can get away with those mistakes. But so when you're playing the number one team in the nation, um, you know, you make some mistakes, they capitalize on them. And they've done that all year. And so that's what they did. And, and they were able to, uh, to control the clock and the ball. And, um, you know, the one, the one thing I'll say is our guys never gave up. I mean, uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I didn't think that that game was, was in jeopardy until, uh, until that last turnover with less than a minute left. Then, then I knew it was over. But right up to that point, 59 minutes, those guys fought hard. Yeah, for those of you who watched it or uh, were at the game, uh, it never felt like we were, uh, you know, that they had control of the game. It felt like we always had a chance, and particularly when we got it back to uh, – you know, 24-13 and had some opportunities. Second half, I uh, thought the defense really stepped up, Mike. Well, I think, uh, you know, we, we had a conversation with them at halftime and, um, you know, we, we gave up way too many yards on the ground. Uh, we knew that if we stopped the run and forced them to pass, that that would play right into our hands. And, and they came out passing early and we, and we stung them on it. And uh, with Zach Koskin interception, the second play of the game, and. Um, so then they uh, went away from it and they just stuck to the run. I think they ran the ball 61 times. Right. <clears throat> so they did, uh, they did a very conservative approach in that first half they were able to take advantage of us. So the second half we changed some things with some different line movements and gave them some different looks and fronts uh, just so that it wasn't the same thing that we gave them that first half. And then we started to have some success and, uh, and get after it. And, and we had more guys trying to make a tackle than just one, which was kind of the case in the first half. Yeah, and their guys run awfully hard. So defensively, you know, we battled them, uh, actually uh, held them to just three points in the second half. Um, offensively, Mike, they, uh, they got a tough defense. They do, you know, they're a, they're a blitzing style defense. And, um, y you know, you can kind of see where they're coming from and when they come, but uh, we try to do some things to get to alleviate the pressure by getting Josh to, to get out on the perimeter and roll out and, and look for some receivers. And, you know, I mean, we've got a pretty good receiving core, and there were times that they were open. But, um, you know, you could see that, uh, that Josh is still not 100% with that hand, and his ability to grip it and rip it just isn't, uh, isn't there for the deep ball. And um, that's where you can exploit these guys is on that deep ball. And so, unfortunately, we just uh, physically couldn't get that part of it done. And then once Josh is on the run and, and kind of running for his life, um, you know, the percentage of those completions goes way down. And, right. and that was pretty apparent. Yeah, and, you know, there was a, a one pr a particular key turnover in the game, and that was the, the – and, again, it was a result of their, uh, their defense. 
Well, they had uh, <clears throat> they had gotten some hits on Josh, and, and, and credit to Josh, the, the hits weren't bothering him um, physically, but they started to take a little bit of a toll on what his job was as a quarterback. So he got out of rhythm a little bit. He, he didn't keep his timing, and, and he started to be a little bit more concerned with the rush. And uh, once he did that, he wasn't going through his progressions. He held onto the ball too long. Um, and there at the end of that first half, and he was trying to just make a play, he got, he got sacked. Fumbled the ball, they pick it up, scoop and score for a touchdown. So instead of it uh, being 14 to six, um, you know we go in the locker room and it's uh, and we're down 21 to six. Yeah, and that was uh, you know a key point in the game. But you know you have to give credit to UMD's defense. I mean they made the play and and uh, and that's how it goes. Special teams, you know I know you're going to mention some things, but I don't want to go by without the gutsy fake punt call uh, going over that. That was a big play for us, Mike. Yeah, you know, that's a fake we've been running all year. We just haven't run it in a game yet. And, um, you know, so we wanted to see how Duluth would adjust to, to that formation. And, and the, the first time they did what we wanted them to do, so we didn't run the fake. Um, the second time they did what we wanted them to do, but we were a little bit too deep and um, we had a little bit too far to go. And I, and I didn't think it was the point of the game that we wanted to uh, to run that fake because you still have to balance that to if, they, if you don't get that first down. Um, you know, what's the psychological advantage you're giving to the opponent. So uh, we got to that point and we, we, uh, we showed that formation. They gave us what we wanted. We had already talked about how we were going to block it. So um, we called it and uh, Dan O'Keefe did a great job. Uh, he got the ball and, and really pressed the line and, and made their one player that was out there that could tackle him tackle him and then he pitched it to Drew Barons and and Drew might have scampered all the way down if he wouldn't have tripped at once he got to that first down marker but uh, you know it kept the drive alive gave a spark to our offense and um, and then we were able to uh, eventually convert a touchdown at the end of that drive. Right well it was a big special teams play and uh, again you know we were right in the ball game it just didn't work out. Mike uh, reflect a little on the season a record setting season you know here with 11 wins so many different records we put in the books uh, Tremendous uh, group of seniors, 13. Um, your first year, uh, it had to be a thrill. It was fun. Um, you know, we did a lot of, the team did a lot of great things. I mean, we finished the regular season 10-1, and one, um, won the South Division, uh, went to the playoffs, um, had a first round bye, got to uh, beat Grand Valley State in the second round of the playoffs. Um, and obviously we didn't want to hang our hat on that game, but um, we knew it was going to be a tough road through the playoffs, and that's the way we wanted it. And we ended up uh, at least getting to the to the Elite Eight. So that's what I told the guys after the game is, um, as much as it stung to lose the game, I mean, there's only eight teams left in the country, and we were one of them. And so that was that was good, and the team that we lost to was Minnesota Duluth, and we played with them the whole entire game. So um, that was something that they could feel good about. We had 17 all-conference players, I think, which is the most that, that we've ever had. Three, three players were all region. Dan Schoen was an uh, um, academic All-American. He won the Glenn Galligan Award. We're still waiting to see the, uh, the AFCA All-Americans to come out. Um, so, I mean, there's so many awards and accolades that have kind of been um, reaped on this team and these seniors. And so it was, a, it was a very special year. And, you know, after the game, to, to see the seniors tell the underclassmen that now it's their turn to mm -hmm. carry it on and do better than we did is a, was a pretty special thing. Well, and we do have a great group of underclassmen coming back. Talk a little bit about uh, how you think, you know, things will be next year. Well, I mean, we've got a very uh, we've got a very veteran crew, you know, starting defensively. We've got three of our four starting DBs are back. They'll all be seniors. Um, our linebacking core will be um, completely new, obviously, with uh, with the departure of three seniors. But um, Austin Lukey had a lot of playing time this year, and he's going to be a pretty special player. Uh, we got quite a few guys in the uh, in what we call the minor league system waiting to to get called up to the bigs. So yeah. we're pretty excited about uh, about those guys, and you know, and true freshmen all the way up to some some sophomores and juniors and then our defensive line we're kind of the same way we got uh, two guys three guys coming back when uh, with Angstrom Jung and uh, and Ben Wardell that were every day every down starters and then um, you know Jake Lee and Joel Slinden Drew Barman and uh, Brandon Ordo have had a ton of reps so we got a lot, of, a lot of guys coming back with playing experience okay. and experience of winning football games and how to do that and then offensively we lose uh, we lose two offensive linemen Dan Schoen will be very tough to replace um, but we got some some freshmen that actually are going to be very good players for us that are coming up through the system uh, we have to replace Joe Clark but Nate Mahone is going to be a right. senior and he's going to be ready to go uh, and be and be very good. Um, our wide receiver core took a hit with losing Tyler Schulte and Eric Ellingworth, 
both those guys had great seasons, but we also have uh, a number of very good wide receivers that are that that have shown some flashes for us mm -hmm. this year. Ben Parsley, Jordan Marshall, we got Sam Holson coming back. Right. Uh, Isaac Jorgensen mm -hmm. still got two years left, so um, and Anthony Schott. So we've got a lot of great pieces coming back. It's just uh, it's always hard to replace the people. Right, right, and of course Josh Hansen will be uh, two years to go yet too. So that's that's uh, you know a lot of optimism there. Well, Mike, uh, it's been a wonderful season. We've enjoyed having you on the show. Now you get into the next season, which is recruiting season. So <laughs> when we uh, when we we get to the end of that and we know who we've signed, we'll talk again. But congratulations to you, your staff, your team on a tremendous year. I right, appreciate it. Probably see you in about two months. All right. The Augustana Sports Calendar is next. We'll be right back. Uber fan here, and this is my sportscaster audition. <clears throat> today in the that, 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 today in local sports. Today in local sports. Today in local sports, and that's the news. I'm missing a page. <laughs> today in local sports. It's too loud. Too loud. Okay. <clears throat> Uber fan for Midcoast Sportsnet, every key matchup, every local rivalry, only on Midcontinent, coming at July. Baby. It's harder than it looks. We call it the pioneer spirit. Always pushing a little farther. Always seeking something better. Today's pioneers still have it. We're creating something new. Something that will transform lives worldwide. That will redefine healthcare. We're doing it for you. With you. Pioneer spirit still lives right here. The new Sanford Health. The Augustana Sports Calendar is brought to you by Sanford Health. Let's take a look at the Augustana Sports Calendar for this week. Thursday, December 9th, wrestling on the road at Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa. Friday, December 10th, the Augustana basketball teams have their opening NSIC games at the Elman Center. The women tip off at 6, followed by the men at 8. Saturday, December 11th, big basketball doubleheader at the Elman Center against Northern State. The women's game starts at 4, followed by the men at 6. Monday, December 13th, it's the Augustana Coaches Show on ESPN 99.1 at 5 o'clock. Wednesday and Thursday, December 15th and 16th, it's Augustana Sports Scene right here again on this channel at this time. And remember, for radio coverage of Augustana men's basketball, you can hear the Vikings on KIKN FM 100.5 and worldwide on the web at KIKN.com. And the Augustana women's basketball games can be heard on KXRB AM 1000 and worldwide on the web at KXRB.com. And for complete information on Augustan Athletics, go to our website, goaugie.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me again next Wednesday or Thursday on this channel for another edition of Augustana Sports Scene. Have a great week, everybody. You've been watching Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly update on NCAA Division II Athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Learn more about Augustana College in Sioux Falls at augie.edu.